Hello and welcome to another edition of Moments in the Bible. I'm your host, David Church, and go ahead and turn over to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. We're actually going to read a fairly lengthy portion of this passage, so I want to get to it quickly. Uh, again, that's Galatians chapter 5. The reason we're going to read so much of this, even though we're really only going to focus on a couple of verses, is because it's really important that we get the context for what is being talked about in this passage. Sometimes it gets preached wrong. I don't mind the application, but it gets preached wrong because the context is off. Always remember that when you study the Bible, context is extremely important. It's key. You get the context wrong, everything's wrong. So let's stay focused. Galatians chapter 5, we're going to start in verse 1. The Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. You did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. Verse 13 is where we're going to start to focus. For brethren, ye have been called into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, there's a couple of things that are interestingly taught through this passage. And again, some of them I don't have a problem with. Some of them I have a huge problem with. For example, this uh, use in verse uh, 4 where it says, uh, Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. This idea that this means you can somehow lose your salvation. Uh, that makes no sense at all. Because who among us think that we can somehow save ourselves? We don't. We know we can't save ourselves. So that's really not an issue. Uh, this is specifically Paul's talking to Jews. He's Whenever you see this topic of circumcision coming up, that is a key indicator that we are talking to Jews. And he's trying to talk to them about conversion. And he's like saying, look, you've done well. You've come far. You've seen what the gospel is and what it means. And, and I'm telling you, Paul lays out in very intricate detail uh, what it means uh, to be saved and use the Old Testament scriptures to, to show how it was a picture of Christ that was to come. Uh, really, the, the, the schoolmaster, the Bible tells us the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. And Paul does a great job of that. He's saying, look, you see all this. You see the gospel in front of you. You see what it is. Why would you stop? Run into it. Take it. So that's his first half of the message. You need to have that context in mind if we're going to understand what is happening down here in verse 13 and 14. Because when we get down to verse 13 and 14, where the Bible says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve one another. It's really important that you understand this isn't talking about sin. Okay? Just like up earlier in the passage, uh, when it says, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Usually we, uh, I've heard it taught, hey, don't get tangled up in sin anymore. And certainly we shouldn't, but it's not what's being taught here. Nor is it what being taught down in verse 13, when it says, only use not your liberty for an occasion of the flesh. It's not saying, hey man, now that you're sin, you d don't just run off and do whatever you want. And again, certainly the Bible does teach that in places, just not here. What is the Bible telling us then? Why is this in here? Why does the Bible say, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh. Why? Because he's talking about people who what they would do is they would come in and they would say, Hey, yeah, this Christianity thing, it's great. So yeah, get saved. Accept Christ as your Savior. Once you've done that, we got some rules that you should follow. There's this, this way of life you need to do things. That bondage is what Paul is talking about. See, 
one of our natural tendencies is to think about the way that um, we were raised before. And we have these systems that in our minds work and, and hopefully worked well. But then when we get saved, we take people and we try to put these things on them. Christ said that they try to load burdens which are difficult to be borne on people. We need not to do that to ourselves either. We're not under the law. We're under grace. And we do not take our liberty and then basically voluntarily surrender it. When I was in college, I lived in a state of misery. You know why I lived in a state of misery? Because I thought that was that was what you did. I died daily. And, and literally, I got into this, this whole thing to where it... I felt good feeling bad. Uh, the more um, discouraged I was and the more wretched I recognized that I was, that's when I felt closest to God. Only thing is this. It wasn't true. Of course I'm wretched. But I'm not supposed to live in the death. No one can live in a death. Christ didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. And he offers us new life. We can't just live in that death. Yeah, sure, we die daily, but we have to live through Christ. And when God gives us this new life, we need to take it and run with it. See, here's the problem. When we're so busy burdening ourselves down with, with rigorous religious tradition and burdening other people down with that same religious tradition, we're missing the point. And we're not doing what we are supposed to be doing. And again, there's nothing wrong with traditions as long as they don't impede this. You say, what? What's the Bible say? Again, verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's how God chooses to have us show his love for you. What does the Bible say? Herein shall men know that ye are disciples, in that ye have love one to another. That's how people will know that we're really a disciple of Christ. And when we have these religious systems that we put in place where we're so focused on our wickedness and our sinfulness and how wretched we are, literally sin becomes our focus instead of serving. It is by serving and letting people see the love of Christ displayed through us that they gain a remedy for their sin. And yes, they do have to know they're sinners. I'm not trying to, to uh, uh, say that you should have a, a sinless gospel. There's no such thing. That's not a gospel. But meanwhile, the people in our churches, the people in our family, our friends are suffering and we do nothing about it. You know, it's it's funny, uh, you know, doing pest control, sometimes it gets hot. Not right now. Uh, it's nice and cool right now. It's covered a great, beautiful day today. It was in the 60s. That was like my wheelhouse temperature range. I love the 60s, my favorite temperature range. But, you know, sometimes it gets really hot. And I'd just be standing out with some people, and some people would be sitting there going, well, sure is hot out, isn't it? And I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, it's hot. You gonna offer me something? I mean, I'm not telling them that. But they're just uh, like, well, stay cool now. Thanks. I have had a ton of people, though, just today, people just say, hey, would you like some water or something? Do you want some soda? Do you want something? Now, normally I carry my own supply of water, so I'm pretty well set. But when you got one side that's just saying, man, sure is hot out there, and you got the other side doing something about it, which customers do you think I am more uh, drawn to? I'm more drawn to the customers that offer me water. Likewise, when the people in the world, the people who are not saved, who are sinners, who are under the curse of the law, look at us and we see their problems. Man, boy, I, I really hope you get help with your marriage. Man, I really hope things work out with your children. I hope things work out with that depression. We do nothing to help. We don't try to connect them with resources. We don't show compassion. We, we're not there for them. How do you think that makes them feel? They're not going to listen. They don't care. They say, man, they, they either get a bad impression of us or worse, they get a bad impression of God. This is, I mean, this is, this is what Christ's followers are like. But man, whenever we offer them that water, what's the Bible say? What's the Bible saying that we have Matthew? In so much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. That's what Jesus said. And it is through those acts that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. 
That's what people are looking for. That's what we use our liberty for. Not to take people and sub subjugate them to a strict way of Christian living this particular, you have to do this, 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 and this. And if you don't do this, 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 and this, mm -mm, nope. It's not how we use our liberty. We use our liberty, according to the Bible, right here in verse 13. But by love, serve one another. My challenge to you today, my challenge to myself today is how are we serving the people around us? How are we serving our neighbors? How are we serving strangers? How are we ser serving coworkers? How are we serving our friends? How are we serving our own families? Do our families feel served or do they feel like we demand they serve us? Mm -mm. We serve them. That's liberty. That is how we make an impact. That is how we see people get saved. That is how we see the saved be truly liberated and live free lives as we teach them onward in that. Uh, really hope this has been a blessing to you today uh, and that it, it, it's given you some insight. I am very excited because we've got a huge announcement coming up, and I mean massive announcement coming up. I've been praying about this for a long time, and this is just a little teaser for you to let you know it's coming. But uh, we're going to drop a, uh, a special announcement coming here in the next week or so. Thank you so much for joining us on Moments in the Bible. Uh, once again, I'm your host, David Church. If you haven't subscribed, please take the time to do so now. God bless you. Go out there and serve someone in the name of Christ. We'll see you next week.